Hello, this is Hans, W1JSB with Radio Set Go, RadioSetGo.com, and I'm going to make a quick video here uh, going over the features and functions of the UKIT's HB1B QRP CW transceivers that I have been converting. So I have one here built into a Pelican box. We'll go ahead and open it up. Give you an overall view and go right into the various um, features that it has. Um, this here in the upper left hand corner is for charging the internal lithium ion battery or for running the rig off external power source. Uh, 12 volt DC. So with this toggle switch in the lower position, the radio will operate on the internal battery and this port will be enabled for charging the internal lithium ion battery. So you'd plug in the charger, the supplied charger, and it would recharge the battery. If you want to use external DC power to run the transceiver instead of the battery power, flip the toggle switch up and plug in the power source there. One thing that's very important to know that you do not want to run the, bat the radio off of 12 volts external source with the toggle switch in the lower position because it will want to recharge the battery and if it's not the correct current then you'll overload the battery it could uh, damage the battery or worse so that's very important to remember normal operation keep the toggle in the down position to run on battery power or to recharge the battery if you're going to use external power source then the toggle switch should be up all right, so I'll go back like that. How do you turn the radio on? Turn it on here by turning there. And you'll get uh, an FB sent in CW. That's the touch keyer circuitry, letting you know that everything is working properly. Uh, you'll see that the battery indicator illuminated and is now giving information um, we have voltage, current draw, uh, power consumption, and an estimated amount of time that the battery will last at this current rate, and a, a horizontal totem uh, showing graphically the battery the battery power remaining. Um, so what's next? We're in VFO mode. This is how you change frequency, just by turning the, the main tuning dial. It's a, two, a 20 position encoder. And you can change tuning steps simply by pressing, and it will underline which tuning step is selected. And you can do this several times. And if you press and hold, it will go to the, tu the highest tuning step and you can change frequencies even faster. Now, how do you go between bands? If you press this button quickly, press and release, it goes between memory and VFO. Once you're in memory, you can cycle through and you go through the various programmed frequencies and the corresponding bands. Now let's say you go to 40 meters here and you want to tune around. What you can do is press the tuning button in once and then you have a, your tuning step and then you can start tuning that particular band. Okay, so this, as I just demonstrated, turns the radio on. It's a switched potentiometer. 
and it's also the audio amplifier. It has a built-in audio amplifier, which drives the internal speaker. So this is what you would adjust for the volume you are wanting. Uh, this is the AF gain, the audio frequency gain. And this is what you work with in conjunction with the audio amplifier volume. Um, if you're going to use headphones, if you're going to plug these in, you would do so here. As soon as that's plugged in, it cuts the audio to the internal speaker and audio only comes out of the headphones. But what you want to know is that when you have headphones plugged in, this control here does absolutely nothing. It only controls the audio to the built-in speaker. So to adjust the volume to the headphones only, you would use this, the AF gain. Okay, next, what do we have? Uh, this is the filter, continuously variable IF filter um, from 3 kilohertz down to 400 hertz. Very nice to have, especially for contesting or um, crowded band conditions. Um, one more thing about the power, um, the current draw, as you will notice, it's only drawing about 62, 61 milliamps here on receive, although we don't have a signal. I don't have an antenna plugged in yet. Uh, so this is very energy efficient, but this has more features. If you flip this toggle switch up, it turns on the backlight, the LCD backlight. And it also turns on the zero beat indicator. Those are the LEDs that illuminate around the tuning dial. So with those on, you see we're up to 94, 93 milliamps. So it's drawing considerable amount more, although it's still very energy efficient. If you consider that an FT817 will draw 400 or 500 milliamps on receive. Um, so this is sort of what I consider a night mode. Um, as it gives more illumination. Uh, with the toggle switch down, I consider it a power saving or a day mode. Uh, let's go over some of these other buttons here. There are two, these buttons all have two functions, at least, uh, either through press and release or press and hold. So this button here, uh, press and release, activates or deactivates the attenuator for very strong signals. And that's indicated on the LCD screen by an A. If you press and hold, this will change the CW delay. So it goes, and you press and to cycle through, it goes down to full break-in keying, QSK. Oh, and if you wait too long, it goes out of that mode, so we'll go back in here. Full 250 milliseconds, 500 milliseconds, or 800 milliseconds. And then when you're done, press and hold, and you're out of that. This middle button is press and release enables or disables split operation for uh, recite, receive incremental tuning. Okay, if you press and hold, changes between modes. Although this only transmits in CW, it will receive in sideband modes, and it does cross-band operation. So you can transmit CW in either sideband mode. Oh, press and hold, back to CW, lower sideband. Oh, that's all we have on this band. However, if we go, whoop, me to do that. Go to 14. There we go. We have upper side band. CW. So depending on which band you're on, it will 
go to the proper side bin. Okay. Uh, next button here. Uh, press and release changes between VFO tuning and the programmed. So I had gone over that before. There's memory mode and the cat is here on the table. I wanted to be in the video. So VFO or memory mode. If you want to, since these are the same frequencies here, I'll demonstrate if you press and hold, it's going to save this frequency to the current memory. So you just press and hold and then it saves automatically. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead, turn the, the backlight and the zero beat indicator back on and plug in an antenna, it has a BNC jack here on the upper right. And I have a dummy load connected here so I can demonstrate some sending. Um, these radios have built-in touch keyers, so you don't need to carry a key with you. And to send, you simply touch the rounded end caps. You can hear how nice of a side tone it has. Uh, clean sounding QSK, if you want QSK, of course. Um, so you can adjust the sending speed on the fly with this potentiometer. It goes down to five words per minute, up to 50 words per minute. works very well. If you have one of the radios that has the optional edge mount micro switch uh, straight key,